Howdy folks, my name is Al. I'm the inventor of Lure Charge products. For those not familiar with the concept, commercial salmon trollers for decades now have been using black boxes to apply low levels of electricity to their uh, stainless steel downrigger wires. Uh, this in turn creates an electric field down near your lures and increases your catch rate. Uh, today I'm going to give a demonstration on my version of how to test your stainless steel downrigger wire voltages and uh, for those who are using braided downrigger line uh, you can either stick around to the end of the video uh, I have some products that give voltage for those or else you can also see them on my website at www.lurecharge.com For this demonstration uh, I've got a couple of digital meters that I use uh, normally they come with uh, just the probes on them but uh, Radio Shack for couple of bucks you can buy a six pack of these alligator clips you just clamp them down and, uh, and they work well for doing a lot of testing. I'm going to uh, represent a, a boat's uh, bonding system as accurately as possible. Uh, what I've done is uh, basically created a bonding wire uh, metals that uh, will uh, be on the underside of your boat or maybe under the, the underside. You know, we've got a brass pipe with a, with a uh, copper wire and a, and a small zinc attached to it. Stainless steel tubing, piece of brass on there. Uh, also a piece of aluminum plate with a, a small uh, zinc on there. And I'll, I'll lay a piece of uh, this uh, raw steel uh, welding rod on there as well just, just to give a, a, a good variety of metals. We're going to represent a boat's uh, electrical system as well. Uh, this flashlight has the batteries removed and I've made a battery pack here. Uh, what I've done is uh, basically killed the last battery uh, down to about half a volt. Uh, stuck this other little piece of wire in here so I can tap off of this battery alone and that's going to be my power for uh, that will uh, imitate the uh, power of a black box going to a stainless downrigger wire. When I get into bulk testing, uh, I've got uh, probably a dozen uh, stainless steel trolling wires here. This is off of a sporty boat, so it's really fine stuff. And I use that for my testing, and I, I've sat these in here overnight, so uh, and they're all in contact with each other, and what it does is it, it brings them all down to the same level. If some of them have a little uh, bits of metal in there, uh, or will have absorbed some electricity. This neutralizes them so they're all going to be even and I'll show you that as we go along. Uh, as well I've got some uh, tubs here uh, with uh, fresh and salt water and a bunch of other uh, bits and pieces but uh, you'll see as we go along. I'm going to start with a basic system here. As you can see I'm wearing gloves. Uh, every living thing gives off a voltage value and I don't want to influence any of the readings. So just the uh, traditional system without a black box. And what I'll do is uh, grab a fresh wire here. And we'll drop our uh, trolling wire down and measure the voltage off of the bonding system or the rudder stock. And there you have it. It's in the point. 4 volt range. This is fresh water, so it'll be lower than salt water for sure. Now we're going to measure what uh, fish sees about 6 inches away. So we'll put that back down there and stick that in there and see what a fish sees. Virtually nothing. What I believe happens is that you don't uh, get a voltage value from your stainless downrigger line. It's you get it from your bonding system and your all your boat's metal parts. So there out there we've got 0.43 volts and I can move out to the farthest way and it, it's still up there. It, it, it doesn't really change much as, as I go. I originally set up a test trough when I was doing my uh, lure manufacturing and uh, research and uh, for a 30 foot trough in fresh water the voltage on, uh, on a lure would only drop 30 percent for every 10 feet of separation whereas in salt water it didn't drop 5 percent for the entire 30 feet. 
So voltage goes a long, long way in salt water, way further than you can ever imagine. Here I'm going to uh, use the, uh, the single battery that's uh, almost dead and I'm going to imitate a black box and what a fish sees off of that. So there we've got voltage applied to this guy. We'll stick him in and I'll see what a fish sees out here. 0.45 volts. Now what I'll do is I'll just turn this flashlight off and you can see the voltage value coming up as that uh, one battery recuperates a little bit. So everything I uh, do with my uh, voltage testing I always challenge myself. And uh, so I, I look for alternative ways to double test what I'm seeing. And uh, what I've come up with is a residual voltage test. And I'll just show you. I've just got some water here. Fresh water again. Everything's hooked up. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, is apply uh, black box voltage to this one piece of wire. Just a few seconds in there. I'll take that off and put it on the positive on my meter. Grab a uh, clean one for reading it. And we'll put that in another vial of water here. And as you can see, I've got re residual voltage. It's kind of like a magnet where you magnetize a, a screwdriver. Uh, you end up with uh, residual uh, magnetism. Well, it happens with electricity too. If you apply a voltage to a piece of metal, that piece of metal will retain voltage just like a battery, and it'll dissipate very, very quickly. Uh, this uh, would uh, reduce down to nothing in about 15 minutes. But that's my way of testing whether something actually has had voltage in it. So, so that's the uh, black box applied voltage. Now we'll go back to the uh, old school system where we've got the, uh, the boats bonding system with the zincs on it. And we drop the cannonball down and uh, we think we've got voltage. In fact, we think we've got 0.4 volts. Now we'll do a residual voltage test on that one. And there's nothing. So just to uh, summarize what we've done here today, if you think that you have line voltage, and you take a piece of trolling wire and drop it in and, and do a test like if, what a fish sees, and if you don't see any significant numbers, then you do not have line voltage coming off of there. If you're testing uh, whether you have a black box or not, uh, please remove the uh, connecting wire from the black box just to prevent any possible residual uh, voltage or, uh, or grounding through the black box itself. And if you want to uh, uh, be a little more precise, you can take a couple of pieces of your stainless steel trolling wire and, and just connect it, uh, stuff it in amongst your spool that you're using on your uh, downrigger and uh, and throw some water on it for 10 or 15 minutes and it'll virtually neutralize to the same voltage as what your uh, trolling wire would be so you'd be starting with a, a zero baseline as well or, or close enough to it uh, to uh, confirm what I'm saying here. Here's some of my uh, lure voltages. I put salt water in here so I can give you accurate voltages this time and uh, as you can see what I've got here is a hook as an extension of, of that one. And basically that's an identical hook to here. 
and uh, what that does is give me a zero baseline when I'm starting. So all I'm getting is actual voltages. Now this one has a, uh, a black nickel hook, 100% stainless steel swivel, and one of my anodes. So I'll just touch this into the water, and this one over here, by the way, is reading what a fish sees. So I'll put that in there, you'll see a little voltage value, 0 0.14, 0 0.13. Uh, that's because I've got two dissimilar metals connected already. They're, they're fairly compatible, but not exact. So now I'll touch the anode to there. And now you're up into the 0.7, almost 0.8 volt range. And I, I can just about hear some of you guys now saying, oh, that's way too much. Well, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I tried to uh, originally to go with the 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts, and the fish wouldn't take it. Whether it's an amperage issue, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, I had to get up into the higher voltage ranges on my lures to get them to take it. And once I did, I couldn't get rid of them. I went over a full volt, and the... Uh, Chinooks were still favoring that side of the boat. There again, there's one of my spoons. It's not actually one of my colors, but it was just one of the samples that I had. There's the anode on there, knuckle-plated spoon. Same hook as, as what I'm using on the receiver end. So I'll just touch that in. If I can get it. And yeah, you're, you're going to see the end of the 0.7 volt range. So there's a spoon and a hoochie. Uh, I also do freshwater stuff, and that's a different anode. You can see that uh, maybe on there it's just a small ring. Same hook. And this is what I use basically for freshwater for trout. So I'll put that in there, and you'll see quite a difference in the voltage. Point eight and up. And for the guys who uh, are using the braided downrigger line, I have a, actually my first product that I that I came out with, and that's a, a downrigger field generator and uh, four braided line. And once again, I'm using the same metal that I'm, I'm measuring off of, essentially. So there you go. This is uh, my, my freshwater version, or my sockeye version, so it's, it's a little higher voltage than the other one. There's my uh, Chinook and Coho version of the downrigger field generator. It's uh, just under 0.6 volts. It does have more mass than a spoon or a hoochie. So uh, they work fine. I've got excellent customer feedback on those guys. For those who are interested in my uh, products, uh, yeah, two different styles of the uh, portable black box. Uh, lots of hoochie colors. Everything's pre-tuned or not. Uh, I've got packages uh, that uh, you can do your own. A lot of spoon colors to choose from, two different sizes, 3.5 and 4.0. Six and a half inch uh, Hoochies, they're becoming more and more popular for Chinooks on the west coast. Uh, flasher tuners, uh, new last year. Uh, just sticks on 3M tape and it sticks under your flasher and it gives a pulsing effect as it, it's shielded uh, half the time, goes around in a circle. Uh, it, people ask me, okay, well, why do I need uh, voltage tuning if I've got voltage on my uh, on my downrigger or on my wires? And my uh, comeback to them is that uh, fish can still reject your lure. Uh, don't give them a chance. Get a little voltage on there. I can make 80% of the fish go from one side of the boat to the other, 16 feet apart. Thanks for watching.